Welcome to our discussion of momentum and impulse. Now these ideas were originally developed by Newton. He was the one who came up with the concept of momentum or what you could think of as quantity of motion of an object. So Newton defined uh, the quantity of motion of an object called momentum as the product of the mass m right here and the velocity v. So this ball for example that has mass uh, and let's say just half a kilogram and it is moving to the right say at uh, 10 meters per second uh, then the momentum of the ball would be for example here 0.5 kilograms times 10 meters per second which will give you a momentum of uh, 5 kilograms times meters per second which brings me to this point that the units of momentum are typically written in kilograms times meter per second. Also you'll notice that momentum is a vector quantity. It is in the same direction as the velocity. It's the product of a scalar mass times velocity v which is a vector so that makes momentum having direction. And you should note that throughout this section we're probably just going to use the term momentum but really all along we're, con we're referring to linear momentum. That is momentum in a straight line. There is another type of momentum called angular momentum. For example, when a body rotates like a figure skater, uh, that type of mo momentum is not studied in Physics B. So don't worry about that. You can read about that. Uh, I believe that's in Chapter 9. So let's just quickly discuss what does linear momentum physically mean? For example, let's look at a skateboard and a truck that are moving along the road. Which object would you think would have more momentum? The truck moving along here or the skateboard moving along here? If the truck and the skateboard were moving at the same velocity v, then which object would have more momentum? Well, the truck has a much larger mass than the skateboard. So one would expect the truck to have a lot larger momentum. And if you had to stop one of these objects going at that velocity, you would find that the skateboard would be a lot easier to stop than the truck. There would be a lot more force over time to stop this truck than it would be for the skateboard. So this momentum is also related somehow to the force and the time to stop it. Another conceptual question would be, is it possible for the skateboard to have more momentum than the truck? And hopefully, if you think about it, well, if the truck was at rest, it would have no momentum. And as long as the skateboard were moving, it would have momentum. So there is a possibility of the skateboard having more momentum than the truck. As long as it has a larger product of mass times velocity than the other object, then it will have greater momentum. So momentum is really, uh, one could think, as inertia in motion. Inertia being mass and in motion being velocity. So now let's discuss what impulse is. Uh, you can see there's a definition listed down below where the impulse is really a constant force that acts on an object over a time period. So it's the product of that force multiplied by the time period. This all really comes from Newton's second law listed down below here. If we start with F equals MA and we replace the acceleration with the rate of change of velocity, so now we're replacing this term with delta V over delta T, we'll see that if we were to rearrange this equation here, we could write this as F equals M times delta V. And now M times delta V, if you look closely, is really going to come down to all the way over here as the change in momentum over the change in time. Why? Because mass times change of velocity works out to be mass times the final velocity minus the initial velocity. And if you get rid of the brackets, you get mass times the final velocity and mass times the initial velocity. Well, this is really the final momentum and this is really the initial momentum. And so really in the end we are finding the change in momentum. So when Newton really wrote the law, he actually wrote it this way. This really reads as the rate of change of the momentum of the body um, is proportional to the force acting on the body. 
and in the direction of that force. So really that's what the way he originally wrote Newton's second law in actual terms of momentum. So now if we were to uh, multiply both sides of this equation by delta t, we would end up with force times change in time equals the change in momentum, which is really impulse. So the impulse of a force represented with this capital J, that is the symbol that we use for impulse, is really the force multiplied by the time that has elapsed during the impact of that force. And hence, that impulse is really a change in momentum, which is really mass times the change in velocity, or mass times the velocity final minus the velocity initial. Now, the units of impulse, by the way, are in newtons times seconds, because force is measured in newtons and time is measured in seconds you can find out that it will be exactly the same units as momentum because it's a change in momentum if you work it out. A newton is a kilogram times a meter per second squared and then that quantity is being multiplied by seconds which works out to be kilograms times meter per second. So you can write the units of impulse in terms of newtons times seconds or you could also write it as kilograms times meters per second. Now there are many applications of impulse in everyday lives. Uh, for example, if you think of airbags or, da or dashboards of cars and why they're padded or why uh, people who are playing sports have padded uh, pads so that they can help them prevent injuries, you can think of how impulse applies in this situation. Let's take a look at the situation of a car that is needing to stop. And there's two scenarios here. It's coming in with a certain momentum m times v. And in the first scenario, it hits a big haystack, and it comes to a halt. And in the second scenario, it hits a wall, and it comes to a halt very quickly. Now, if you look at the first scenario, the force of impact is quite small. There's a very small force because the time of impact is very long. And in the second situation, the time of impact is very short, and hence the force that is exerted on the passengers would be very large. But in both scenarios, that force times time is always equal to that change in momentum that the car occurred, underwent. Another way you could look at this scenario is by examining the force time graphs for this uh, collision. Now if you look at the definition of impulse, it is force multiplied by time. So the product of force and the time of impact results in the impulse. So really, graphically, if you were to draw a force time graph, that area under the curve represents the impulse or the change in momentum. Now you'll notice that these two scenarios have the same impulse that has occurred except one has a much greater force, that would be the wall here, and here it has a much smaller force, but both have the same equal impulse. So by extending the time of impact, you can reduce the force, or if you shorten the time of impact, you can increase the force. Just like down here in this picture, if you were a boxer getting hit by a punch, if you were to move into the punch and shorten that time of impact, then the force of impact on his face would be much larger. So typically, if you're getting punched in the face, what do you normally do? Hopefully one would realize that you would ride the punch backwards so that you could extend the time of impact and hence reduce the force of impact. There are all sorts of everyday examples of this, like cushions, bumpers, and pads used in everyday life use this principle to protect against shocks by increasing the duration of impacts. So, in summary, momentum is the product of mass times velocity and is a vector quantity in the same direction of the velocity. Impulse is that change in momentum that occurs from the final momentum minus the initial momentum and it is equal to also the product of the force times the time of interval time interval of which is the time of impact so now let's move on to an example and we're done with a short discussion of momentum and impulse